did you say? I said if you go ahead with the annulment, you'll be signing your father's death warrant. Death warrant? Are you saying you'll kill my father if I don't stay married to you? Oh, no, Sam. Of course not. Not me. I'm not a murderer. But there are people out there who want him dead. I don't understand. Sam, people have been after your father ever since he abandoned you all those years ago. Who? This does not make sense. Well, apparently he brought down a major mob boss. He was instrumental in the trial. He testified before a grand jury, and the government put him under protection. That's why you never heard from him. That's why he's disappeared. The government doesn't want him found. Then it's true. But how do you know about this? Oh, it doesn't matter. All I know is that the mob is still after him. As a matter of fact, they came to me because they knew I married a Whitmore. They want your father. And you'd give him to them? Oh, no. No, no. Quite the opposite. I protected him. I made them believe I'd never even seen him. So, here's the trade-off, Sam. Either we stay married and try to work at this relationship, or you go ahead with the annulment, and I'll make a phone call. It's just one phone call. That's all it takes. And I'll do it if you force me to. I'm sure it's the Taylor people who are looking for me. I called Istanbul. My contact there told me that someone was there asking questions about me, so they must have discovered that I left. Well, do you think they know you came back here? Uh, that's hard to tell. I have been moved before. Peter, what I don't understand is if that man you put in prison has died, then what is the... Well, that man has a son, Ruth, Mitchell Taylor. And he hasn't forgotten. Everything you've read about the mob is true. They live for revenge. Oh, my God. But what are you going to do? Well, I can't leave. The one thing I won't do is to run out on Sam again. But I can't stay where I am. There are too many people at the Winston who know that I'm not Peter Williams. Well, Peter, you shouldn't stay in Chicago. Not if it could cost you your life. There is something that could help me. But I just don't know if I can find it. Well, what is it? It's uh, an insurance policy. It's something that I have that actually belonged to the old man. It's something very valuable. But Ruth, I don't want to involve you. Peter, I'm already involved. You know, I just passed that Christmas tree stand on Sheridan Road, and I couldn't pass this. Well, Peter, what brings you here? Phyllis, Mother and Daddy will always stop me. Mm. Any idea what you're getting them this year? Well, Chantal, you know, I was kind of thinking that maybe this year you and I could go on on a gift for them together. How about it? Maybe we could even afford to get them something they'd really like. Yeah, like, uh, how about, uh, uh, well, a CD player? Hey, that's perfect. Yeah, that way they can land in the 20th century. Huh? Oh, one step at a time and just learn how to work the VCR. Hi. Hi. Would you like something to um, I'll take an OJ. Yeah, I'll make that too. Okay, one problem solved. Now, what do you want? Oh, I, I have no idea. Um, peace of mind? <laughs> Now, what about you? That and a job would be nice. Nothing new on the job front, huh? Not yet. I'm going to wait till after the holiday before I really make a decision. Well, let me tell you something. If anyone's entitled to a break, it's you. Seems like you've been working your whole life, Chantal. I have. Anyway, what about Maya? What are you going to get her? I don't, I don't have a clue. I'm, I know what she'd like. Something round and shiny for her left hand. And, and me on my knees. <laughs> You're not ready for the big commitment just yet, are you? No, listen, it's enough just living together. Are you? Yeah, well, we figured we'd give it a shot. Let me tell you something. This girl moved in with almost everything she owns. I'm talking everything, all right? Now, 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 now that I don't mind, but, you know, I love her. Things are moving awfully fast, though. So how is it going? Well, the truth is, I like having her around. I just don't want to rush into anything. So, uh, enough about Thank me. You. Uh, what about you? Me? Yeah, you. I'm, I'm not talking to anybody else. I spilled my guts. Now it's your turn. Thank you. Nothing to tell. Oh, uh, come on now. That's not the way I hear it. As a matter of fact, Miss Marshall, rumor has it that you've been seeing Eric Royal. A lot.
I see something wrong? No, of course not. Then it's true. About me and Eric? Uh-huh. I guess. Chantal, that's great. I, honey, it's about time that you gave your personal life some equal time. Look, wait a minute, Adam. Don't get the wrong idea. Uh, what idea is that? I'm not saying it's anything serious. No, no, don't, don't worry. I'm on to you, Chantal. I can read you like a book. Now, you're the lady who never lets herself get involved. Always too busy climbing up that damn ladder the state's attorney's office. Yeah, well, I don't have that excuse anymore. Besides, there hasn't been anyone I wanted to get involved with. Until now. You know, the problem is, I know what people will think. Don't come on to hell with what people think. I know, that's what Eric says, but we can't ignore the fact that I was his prosecutor. I was the one who sent him to prison. Yeah, and you also were the one who found the evidence that overturned the conviction that got his butt out of jail. It's all right to like the guy. Now, you're being too hard on yourself. You've done that your whole life. Yeah, I know. You deserve a good time. I do, don't I? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've fought my feelings for him for so long. But last night, I finally gave up. You gave it up? Whoa, wait, wait, wait. You gave, you gave up or, or gave in? Uh-huh, you gave in. Okay. Oh, come on, that, that, that's terrific. So how do you feel? Alive and well. Mm -hmm. What about Eric? How does he feel about you? Uh, Peter stopped by to see if any of his old things are still here. I was hoping him maybe in the basement or up in the attic. I thought the Vivian would probably know. Well, yeah, you know, I was just up there yesterday getting uh, Christmas decorations, all sorts of stuff. There are books, antiques. I did notice an old service footlocker. Could I take a look at it? Well, be my guest. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. As a matter of fact, I'll take you up there myself. Uh, I'll let you decide on what to do with this wreath. <laughs> all right, just right up here now. It's gonna be a little bit chilly up there. You wouldn't do that. Try me. I needed a wife and I chose you. And if you think I'm giving you up now, you're crazy. We're talking about a man's life here. We're talking about a life in your hands. Now you make the choice. What choice? If I don't say marry to you, then you're gonna have my father killed? What kind of a choice is that? I can't believe you even want that kind of marriage. What I want is you, Sam. Even if I don't want you? We already took our vows. I am your husband. And I intend to take that place in your life to go along with all the duties of that privilege. You disgust me. Yes, well, you're going to lead a very pampered, rich life. You'll have the world at your feet. And in time, Sam, you will grow to love me. Never. Never's a long time. Look, I may stay married to you, but you will never come near me. Oh, I don't know. I think so. That's part of the bargain. Oh, you just expect me to pretend to be the loving Mrs. Jordan Hale? In public and in private life, I intend to be a happy man, sir. And there is one other thing. You will not see or speak to Kyle again. If I find differently, it will mean harm to your father. You bastard. A life without Kyle? Father. Think about it. I was terrified of my own kids. I know it sounds really dumb and I don't know how it all happened, but I guess they they had more control than me, I suppose. I remember every time they come near me, I just, I just couldn't handle the feeling inside. 
that they made me have. And I don't know, I just it was just so built up and every time I looked at them or every time I saw them, I just wanted them to go away. It was really horrible. To actually go and ask someone for help was would have been the hardest thing I've ever had to do. That was really hard. There's people there if you if you know where to go. Go, Peter. My father. Please be there, Peter. Please answer. Well, here it is, such as it is. I think you've been tending to find time to come up here and look through this stuff. Oh, there's something about these old houses, isn't there? And how all these things managed to accumulate for generations. I don't think the family that lived here before ever came up here. So Rebecca left all these things behind. Nice old chair. Can you believe it used to belong to my father? Rebecca hated it, so she relegated it here to the attic. It's hard to believe that was almost 30 years ago. Our old mailbox. Who would think to save something like that? <laughs> now you say that you did see my footlocker up here somewhere. Yeah, I saw something up here when I was getting our Christmas decorations. I hope it's the one you mean. Must be a lot of old memories up here for you. <laughs> this damn chair. I must have fixed it a dozen times before I retired it. I remember the first time it broke it was a Thanksgiving dinner. It must have been uh, 67 or 68. I just finished carving the turkey. Sat down and bam, fell flat on my tail. <laughs> God, that seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, I'll bet. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is what I noticed the other day. Now that's it. That's my old food locker. Made four years of the service and still survived to tell a story. Do you have a key? No, no, I left that years ago, but it's not locked. So Looks like uh, Rebecca gathered up all of my things and stored them in here. Well, I can't blame her. She probably the last thing she wanted was any reminders of me. Uh, look, you don't mind if I take a little time to sort through this, do you? Oh, no, no. You take all the time you need. Yeah, it's just I, I can't afford to overlook anything. I'll tell you what, I'll take a look over here and see if I can find something interesting. Yeah. Hey, 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 don't, don't get me wrong, Chantal. I think it's great that you're spending some time with Eric, but, well, like I said, you deserve a good time after everything that you put into this case. But? I ain't there no buts. Just as long as you understand that it's a good time that you're after. What is that supposed to mean? Come on, this is me you're talking to. I know you, Chantal. You're not a jump-into-bed type. And I'm guessing that this guy means something to you, otherwise you wouldn't have just... Adam, I'm a big girl. Yeah, yeah, you are. Look, Eric and I had a great...